Honorable Ambassador, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to move beyond the particular object which you see behind me, and I would like to confront you with alternative conceptualizations and constructions of memorialization. I also would like to move beyond the object and ask questions about the place. Cape Cross as a place, a space, and a cultural a landscape. I have a PowerPoint presentation. Um, uh, this space is not ideal for working with visuals and the one or other text. Let's see how it goes. I did cut out an audio presentation. This does require that you briefly have a look at one of the texts, which hopefully can be seen. I hope some of you have asked the question whether they are not alternative names to Cape Cross. Cape Cross as a name for a place is a typical expression of an epistemological praxis which entailed erasure and suppression of African history on a large scale. It's a colonial name. It's rooted in imperial sort of uh, history. It reflects white settler dreams and anxieties as so many names in Namibia. Many African place names and many indeed do not feature in any map or for that sake any written history. And yet the spatial maps of historical and present day Namibia, Namibians do look rather different. These maps, actively memorized, uphold and indeed continually reclaim space and places. And in the following next uh, few minutes, I take various African names for Cape Cross as an entry point to multiple memories, histories, and conceptualizations. And I only use the name Cape Cross for convenience sake. Retaining the name of Cape Cross, and I use the name in inverted commas, poses a political problem. The more so as the reference to the Padrao in this name is irrelevant for those African names and local histories I discuss. The Padrao does not feature, and not surprisingly so. Rather, Cape Cross is important for what it is, an African place, space, and landscape of various people's histories, experiences, and claims. Let me check on the PowerPoint. Oshirero speaking people nowadays refer to Cape Cross as Ochozondera, the place of birds, and they root this name in the local history of a clan typically expressed through praise poetry, Preis Gedichte. One praise poem, in this case, uh, or Mutando, or rather a fragment of it, reads as follows, and I hope you can read it. The place of birds to the places of your mother, the places of the cattle of the house of Oshimbumba, who did not stay long, they were all together as one. Damara people, in turn, associate Cape Cross in Gokowap with at least two names. I hope you can read them, and my pronunciation is not a correct one if I say one name is Gaikanabis, the water of dump, scared people, and the other name is Ganaquibis, the place of the missing camel thorn tree. Let me say why I do think praise poetry is important. Praise poetry refers to a genre of narration and performance in which names and narratives, melody, dance, and mimics are often fused. With regard to content, praise poems fuse space and time, 
nature and history, people and animals. They reflect topological and not simply topographical experiences. They imply a structuration of spatial differentiation as well as historical experiences. Importantly, they reflect a praxis of living with the land, conceptualizing and presenting it in particular aesthetic ways. As a genre, praise poetry is key to an understanding of pre-colonial history and thought. Praise poetry was crucial for upholding land claims during the colonial period, and they continue to inform post-colonial politics until today. Any debate in current Namibia about land rights, ancestral lands, and colonial history is unthinkable without the continual importance of praise poetry in various languages as an actively narrated and often publicly performed genre. And indeed, amongst Oshirero speaking people, praises formed a crucial basis in pre colonial times to enact, prove, deny, claim, counterclaim, and or otherwise contest land rights. Praise poems, this is what I want to get across to you, they can be read as legal charters. Let's briefly look at some of the names I confronted you with and we want no other text. The names and narratives relating to Ozondera or to Gaikanabes or Ganakuibis associate, as we can see, either particular people or clans with this particular place and space, or they characterize a place with regard to natural features. And typically for especially Herero people, cattle owners are linked to a particular place. Praise poems root individuals or families or groups of people in landscape. One can call this a praxis of banking historical and biographical information in the landscape and simultaneously naturalize lived history. Central Namibia in general reflects a wide and deep and overlapping but also conflicting tapestry of place names and these kind of narratives, most of which are not represented on a map or in a book. One gets a slight indication of this sort of tapestry by looking at this map from 1894. Unfortunately, um, uh, the light would be very bad. I could point out to you Cape Cross and some of the local names in different languages in the area. What's also crucial to keep in mind is that graves as physical markers are sometimes, not always, associated with a particular place and or local history. In the case of Cape Cross, it is perhaps not surprising to realize that given the desolate environment and the scarcity of groundwater along the Namibian coast, the text which I presented to you make reference to the fragility of the landscape and or the temporality of habitation and or the fragility of people there. And yet, Despite these features, Cape Cross was, as these names and texts inform us, a place of belonging, of African belonging. The importance of graves at Cape Cross, Cape Cross is emphasized expressively in the history of the Daure Daman, a community with ancient settlements in the wider Daures Brandberg area of Western Namibia. Let's move beyond this particular place of Cape Cross. What about the Namibian coast? It's interesting to see how other texts include experiences which relate to people coming from the sea. In 1836, a Herero woman explained to a British traveler how people moved towards the coast and managed coastal trade. I do hope you can read the quotation. It says, 
The woman left the men with the cattle and were taken across in a boat to the other side where white men wearing hats were seen. And the last sentence from the quotation, we would not allow these white men to come into our country, unquote. This text not only highlights the importance of women's roles in conducting coastal trade, but emphasizes the importance of maintaining control. A Damara praise poem from the 1920s, at least recorded in the 1920s, and referring to people coming from the sea, emphasizes the necessity of being cautious with regard to these unknown people. It simply states, we cannot sleep. Obviously, coastal engagements with ship crews, with whale hunters and guano miners had led to multiple experiences and also conflict, as such entrenching the perception of acting cautiously and maintaining control. Ein Zwischenergebnis. The Padrao as an object does not feature in all of this. Rather, it are historical coastal experiences of people with reference to place, space and landscape which mattered and which continue to matter. Praise poetry is often performed, as I said, and indeed it constructs discursive spaces of and for reflection and identification, for debate and argument, claims and counterclaims. These orally aestheticized spaces can be extremely powerful in tuning and turning the minds and bodies of people. As such, then, and a few scholars, including Larissa Förster and Yekoda Kavari, have argued for this, as such, they can also be, be seen as invisible monuments. Praise poetry as invisible monuments in which performance and metaphors matter, not material objects. Indeed, Central Namibian memory culture is not, in contrast to a museum such as this one here, tied to material objects, but foremost to intangible cultural productions which appeal to the audiovisual senses in a complex way. Listening to praise poetry was and is seeing history, experiencing history, and constructing public history. As such, and I come to my last point, as such, there is obviously no stone bust of Kavazemba Daniel Carico, an uh, Ochierero speaking leader of Western Namibia during the late 19th and early 20th century, who, asso who is associated with Cape Cross. To give you a brief sketch, he is remembered as an exceptionally gifted, at times ruthless fighter for the sake of his followers in the politically contested region of Omaruru, Erongo and the coast. He was imprisoned by the incipient German government when in 1896 he claimed his rights to the booming guano mining industry at Cape Cross, when he claimed his rights over Damara labor contingents working there, and when he claimed his rights to purchase ammunition from British ships in the Bay of Cape Cross. Praise poems attest to his leadership and resistance, and they attest to his cunning escape from the German prison and during the genocidal war of 1904, his escape to northern Namibia with some of his followers. Kavazemba uh, is finally credited with establishing the Oshihorongo Reserve northeast of Cape Cross after 1916, shortly before his death. He was, as is said, I quote, the owner of the black cattle with spots on the eyes and, I quote again, a stubborn wanderer between the places. 
As colonial documents reveal, he and his counselors in the early 1990s used roadblocks blocks to block German troops from entering the wider Umarura area, to levy taxes on European traders, and as such uphold sovereignty in the wake of German colonialism. In many ways, a modern chief, he used paraphernalia of the colonial state, including uniforms for his soldiers, when turning up in Cape Cross in the mid-1890s in order to enact his power claims and his resistant politics to colonial oc occupation, to colonial labor recruitment and taxation. Indeed, the reference to Cape Cross as the place of birds resonates with claims to a place which, because of the century-old bird colonies from the mid-1890s, as I said earlier, was transformed into a lucrative Guano mining site. Kavazemba returned from exile, as I said, and gave extensive testimony in 1916 to the British about German colonial rule. I give you one quote where he makes a statement saying, our people, men, women, and children, were shot like dogs and wild animals. Our people have disappeared now. End of quote from the so-called Blue Book. The praises for Kavazemba, as narrated to me in the 1990s, also visualized the man who rescued his people by leading them into exile in 1904 and, I quote, bringing them back and they are still alive, unquote. As his granddaughter, Erika Hinjo, explained to me, what mattered was that here there was a man who gave his people back the land after the Germans had taken it. The praise poems and the praises for Kavazemba cast a monument, if you want to like it like that, for the founder of a reserve to the northeast of Cape Cross. Let me end here. Let me end here and make a final remark. When I received the invitation to the symposium, it struck me that it was, and perhaps is, taken for granted that the Patrao at Cape Cross bears significance. Well, perhaps it does so. Yet, for, for whom and for what? Western Namibian conceptualizations of place, space, and landscape seem not to attest any significance to this particular object, and yet, and not surprisingly, conceptualize the historical landscape where it was planted. People in the area did build and continually build numerous yet invisible monuments for those who, if only temporarily, lived at Cape Cross. People built and continue to build innumerable invisible monuments in central Namibia for places which we call Cape Cross, or for that matter, Ochomuise, or Eichams, or Wintook, or the Dauris, or Okozongomingo. They associate these with the biographies of some people who previously lived there, and as such claim identification rights and much more. Perhaps it is a matter of convincing museums, both here and in Namibia, to learn to see history whilst listening. Thank you very much. <laughs>